Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Scrap Metal Works, where lately everything I've been doing is anything but scrap metal working. Anyways, uh, this project is about a water level sensor. Um, I have uh, my system in the basement here, I have a, an instant water heater and my uh, furnace, if you can see that. Uh, both of them are gas powered and of course they generate condensation. As you can see here, the condensation line does go outside. Uh, that line over there and there is one back there somewhere um, The problem is that in the winter in New England when it gets cold outside it freezes So there are provisions so that it can drip inside um, As you can see so basically the water will go down there if it finds a blockage uh, on the outfeed of the pipe Then it backs it backs up here and and it drains into the bucket So the other one here is the here's the vent and so if, if it backs up over there, it comes back over here, falls into here, and it goes to the bucket. As you can see, this one is dry right now, and that one has uh, just a little bit of water in there. Anyways, the problem, again, like I said, is that when it freezes, it comes in, and it drips into the buckets, and then, of course, the buckets fill up. I have yet to um, be surprised by the water overflowing, but it's come very, very close numerous times. So I tried last year to implement um, a water level sensor using Sonoff uh, RF uh, water sensors. But uh, the probes basically rusted in the water and so they didn't make good contact anymore and it didn't alarm me. Um, plus, uh, at the time anyways, you couldn't really set off alarms and do other automations with those gadgets anyways. So I decided to use, um, to solve this problem using an ESP8266 connected to my home assistant and uh, program with uh, ESP Home. Uh, let me show you how I did it. Okay, so here's a simple schematic for the water level sensor. Uh, it uses a D1 Mini. Uh, the float switches, which I'll show you in a minute, are connected to uh, pin D5 and D6 of the D1 Mini, which are held high through a 10 kilo ohm resistor when they're normally floating there. And then of course the D1 Mini is powered by 5 volts. As far as the uh, 5 volts is concerned, I did not use the standard uh, USB port that comes with the D1 Mini because I have a whole bunch of uh, power supplies floating around from, you know, old cell phones, chargers and whatnot. And so I happen to have one that has a USB, uh, a couple of them actually, that have USB-B type connectors. Uh, other ones have barrel type connectors, you know, 2.8 millimeters and so on. So what I did is I bought uh, connectors on Amazon that I can use in these projects. And so basically I bring power outside of the, of the D1 Mini onto the other connector and then I power it using those old power supplies, which of course they work well. They range from 0.7 amps to two and a half amps. So plenty of power. For this one, I'm using the smallest one I have, which is a half an amp, uh, which again, this is just gonna sit there for the most time doing nothing anyways. So as far as the uh, float switch, um, this is what I found. This is a, uh, an aquarium float switch. And as you can see here, basically it floats up and down. Okay, and um, let me show you that here. It floats up and down. And so as the water rises up, it's gonna trigger this switch. There is a reed switch inside. Uh, the beauty about these um, uh, float switches is that they can be normally open or normally closed. And the way you decide that is basically removing this clip on the bottom here. You flip the float around 180 and now the switch uh, can do the opposite functionality. Uh, I think it came uh, as a normally closed, which means that when it's down it's closed. And then I flipped it so that I can have the switch on uh, as in closing um, that pin right here to ground when the water level is up. I could have easily inverted that functionality in ESP Home, but what, you know, why not? Um, so again, uh, D6 in this case is connected to one of the switches, which goes to ground, and um, to make sure that it doesn't float uh, in an unknown state, this is connected to a 10 kilo ohm resistor, which goes back to the five volts, and so is the other pin. As far as the uh, programming of the uh, D1 Mini, 
Um, this is the YAML file, and I will put a picture so that you can stop it, uh, stop on it, and have a little better resolution. But basically, this uses a simple um, binary sensor. Uh, so it's got two of them, and one is just called uh, furnace condensation, and the other one is called hot water condensation. And uh, I have a couple of uh, millisecond delays there so that it doesn't false trigger. Um, I found that to be just a better way to eliminate any uh, bouncing, anything like that. Um, and also it's labeled as class moisture, which gives you the nice little uh, water bubble icon. So here's what the simple panel looks like. And again, the point here is that it doesn't have to be fancy because the real benefit of this is that as the state changes, I can receive notifications on my phone, uh, uh, again, through Home Assistant, or I can set it to do something. You know, in the future, I might want to put a pump in that bucket um, so that it pumps into a bigger bucket or a drain somewhere, whatever. So this can be used as the mechanism to do that. So basically, uh, it's it, that, that the condition is always dry. Uh, again, using the moisture uh, class. And then as I push this float up, boom, it changes to wet, okay? So very simple. So in order for the uh, physical implementation of the circuit, here is what it looks like. I'm not entirely too proud of it. Um, AK, I, I, the box is a little bit too small, so I had to kind of jam things in here. Uh, but I will show you the diagram of the box that I designed um, and um, uh, using Tinkercad. And basically here's the DWA Mini, here's the uh, USB-B connector, and then one of the two um, pull-up resistors. And then for wiring, I used uh, some old uh, power wires. I figured that it would be nice and sturdy, protected. They don't need to be really, you know, waterproof or anything like that because uh, uh, there is uh, there is no 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 high power on these lines, of course. But I just wanted something nice and sturdy that I can string from the box all the way out to those buckets. So here's the box that I came up with. Again, I'll show you the uh, Tinkercad uh, diagram. Okay, and then here's the lid for it. Pretty simple, no clips. I found that basically by having a border on the inside, this thing snaps nice and secure and it doesn't go anywhere. So here's the box, it's just gonna hang on the wall underneath that water heater like that. And then this will go into its um, uh, outlet power. And then these lines, which are quite long, will go into the bucket. Okay, so here is the first one and then I have another one just like it. Uh, to hang the um, float into the bucket, I designed this bracket in, again, Tinkercad, and basically there is a screw thread right here, and then it's nothing but a 90 degree bracket that goes into the bucket. And here is the nut that goes with it, it goes right through, and it holds it on the side of the bucket. I'm going to show you now how it, how it works. So here it is, uh, basically bolted onto the side so it comes off fully, fairly quickly. Uh, this wire is shrink tube just to kind of hold it together. Um, I think what I was planning on doing is basically putting a tie wrap over here so it acts as a bit of a strain relief just like that. Um, other than that, the bucket, the, uh, the flow switch just hangs in there as the water comes up. It's going to raise it and that's it. Off you go. So it was a quick fun project to do. Uh, I spent uh, about a day and a half uh, putting it together only because printing this bracket takes about three and a half hours. Printing that nut takes about an hour and a half. So a lot of time is just spent doing that. And printing uh, both the lid and the box here took about uh, seven hours. So that was almost all day yesterday doing that. Uh, but it's been fun. I can't wait to put it down there and uh, I will write an integration for Home Assistant that uh, flags me on my cell phone. Um, and that's it. Off you go. So uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, constructive comments are welcome and um, have fun. Thank you.